this morning when I woke up, I thought, <coughs> am I feeling too ill to do the talk? That was always my first thought. And then I thought, um, why? Why am I doing this? And I realized that I have become the curse. I have been hit by the curse of materials light. And I have become my own realia. I've become my own example of why you should say no. The fact that I'm standing here is because I was too busy when Christina asked me if I would do half an hour to actually have the nows to say no. Okay? <laughs> so I am talking about uh, something, and you can look at me and think, this is what happens to you if you don't say no. I think it fits in quite nicely with a lot of what Mike was saying and a lot of what uh, Maureen said. Basically, it's very short. Uh, I want to look at the whole idea of decision-making, uh, and to do that in sort of 25 minutes is, is not very easy. Uh, but I thought we'd look at it in a slightly different way. Uh, when I'll start off with a, a, a little story. When Diana and I opened the school, um, they were just, this is a very long time ago, okay, before some of you were probably born. But anyway, uh, we, we were, there were just the two of us teaching. And uh, we were very enthusiastic about, uh, about the school. And we wanted kids. We always knew we wanted to have kids in the school. And uh, we got, uh, we were both teaching. We got on reasonably well most of the time. And uh, we thought, okay. So when people came in and said, Mm, I'd like to send my son to, uh, to, to J1, for example. And we'd say, okay, well, there's a Tuesday, Thursday, or there's a Wednesday, Friday. No, no, no. Can he come on Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay? And we thought, well, we'll liaise with each other, and that'll be fine. So, yes. And we said yes to lots of things. And the school staggered along, and we nearly killed each other quite regularly and the, the students didn't get on particularly well. And it was only really in the second or third year when we started saying no that we took off. Now, I know that's an extre extreme example, but that's what we're talking about, really. Um, now, what I'm talking about as well is the legacy of other people not saying no. So I'm not even going to ask you to discuss this bit because these, I'm talking about these horrendous decisions, quite often that started off as quite a small decision, that then over time return again and again and again, so that you think, oh no, not again, you know, what happened there? Why is this person in to talk to me again about something that I should have said no to three years ago, okay? I need tea to do this. I'm talking about the decisions made in what Mike very nicely referred to is decisions made in your moments of fear, okay? So, I thought what we do is we try a different way around. I've got no idea whether this will work or not. But uh, we're going to go backwards and then come forwards. No, we're not going to do anything at all. <laughs> Multitasking, you see, I, sh I knew I should have said no. Okay, so why am I here? All right, now, um, as I just admitted to you, I, I am still, I suppose, and used to be a teacher, and there was something similar to this in one of the course books that I very much like, uh, one of them to teach can and can't. But, um, uh, and this, by the way, you're looking well. I, I use this one partly because it reminded me of my mother, because I could be standing there with one of my arms falling off and half my head missing, and she said, oh, you're looking well. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so this is very good for can and can't, but it's also very good for third conditional. So, um, if he hadn't been distracted, he would have seen the bus, okay? If he hadn't been using his mobile phone, he wouldn't have been distracted, okay? So then we work our way back to the initial problem. So what I'd like you to do, I don't really mind actually at this stage of the conference whether you work in twos or threes or fours or sevens, <laughs> but uh, can you get into some sort of discussion-y group and see, I'm going to give you two minutes to see how far back you can go with the fact that this poor chap 
uh, was um, uh, on his mobile phone, he was distracted, and he stepped in front of a bus, okay? Imagine his morning and where it started, okay? <laughs> Two minutes. I want to see how far back you can go to the smallest thing. Okay, can we stop? Can we stop? It sounds to me as if some of you have gone back a month. I didn't want that, okay? Forward a bit. Okay, let's have a couple of, of ideas of what started off this poor chap's day. Nobody? He got the sack in the morning. Very unlikely. This is the sort of thing I have to work with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I'm practicing on all of you to say no. <laughs> oh, thanks. If he hadn't... Yeah, you've got to get your third condition right yeah, as well. No, that's the problem. <laughs> I don't believe in it anyway. <laughs> that's, that's right. If he hadn't had a fight with his girlfriend, he wouldn't have, she wouldn't have called him. Okay, okay. I c we can carry on. We have a whole... <laughs> yes, okay. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> um, if his girlfriend hadn't told him she was pregnant, he wouldn't have been so distracted. Oh, OK. <laughs> I'd like you to think if there's something that's happened in the last, say, uh, perhaps not, not over Christmas, but before Christmas, um, if there's something that, that has happened that has made you think, oh, no, I can't deal with that person again, I can't see that person again, I can't deal with the situation again. Just take a second to think about that. Okay, has anyone, can you put your hands up if you've thought of something? I'm not going to ask you because it's one of our deepest, darkest secrets, but uh, anyone thought of anything? Well, yes, exactly, yes, yes. I meant can't in that sort of, okay, all right. Can we move on? Remember, I'm not talking about things that are planned to be flexible. I'm talking about things that have happened almost accidentally and take on a life of their own, okay? So this is an example, okay? This is, uh, this is a beautiful, clear, I hope, uh, easy to read um, uh, overview of a school level system, okay? It can be used by reception because they can show where they've been tested in. It can show people, they can then refer to what books they use or what books they don't use or where they are on the chart or whether they're going to do exams. <laughs> But the admin staff know exactly where they are. The teachers know exactly where they are. The students, perhaps, more, most importantly, know where they are and where they're going to go. Okay? So, uh, very useful, very clear. Thought out in a principled way. The way we make all of our decisions. Okay? Right. Okay. Now, I've done quite a few in inspection visits and I've read the reports for quite a few more. And one of the things that quite often crops up when you're talking to uh, particularly a DOS uh, is this sort of system, is this sort of um, example, okay? So you've got this lovely, this is a sort of takeout, and you've got this lovely uh, level system that you've thought out very carefully. And then you've got this lovely thing called JPrint2+. Plus. Now, why is it called that? It's because it started <laughs> off as J pre-int, and it started off like that because somebody, one of the reception staff knows, comes in and they think that they've got clout in the local education community, and their son can't come to the lessons that you've got, and they promise that they're going to bring in another eight students if you open <laughs> this particular group at this particular time, four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> on a, <laughs> you know, on a Friday, Sunday, and you're surrounded by other people and you agree. And the group gets smaller and smaller and then three years later you're calling them J pre-intermediate 2 plus because they don't fit in anywhere else. They don't go anywhere else. We don't know where they're going. We don't really know where they've come from. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the, 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 they're the parents that come in every two minutes and tell us what to do. We've also got um, a 2C Thursday, 
that uh, somebody agreed to, you know, no, no, you can come once a week. You're a beginner, we need adult beginners, I'm panicking because the numbers are now, okay, come once a week and come on a Thursday. Um, you'll never get through the material. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use the same books. Uh, reception won't know what to do with you, basically. But we'll keep going and the group will keep getting smaller. And then you can imagine for the other intermediate plus 2B, okay. Um, since we've started saying, no, we don't have this happening in our school, uh, but we have it nearly happen because we all get nervous and we all think uh, that this could happen. Another example from reports is schools where, and again, I'm not talking about where this is planned to be the case, but schools where uh, all of a sudden they've got, for example, uh, an upper intermediate group, uh, a lot of students in their upper intermediate level, uh, several groups, okay, perhaps they've got eight, nine, ten groups, okay, and they've got eight different books. Because somebody said to a teacher 300 years ago, if you want to use another book, you can, okay? So everyone is tearing their hair out, the DOS has got more uh, work with the book order and that sort of thing. So these are the sort of decisions I'm talking about. Does this sound, does this sound uh, at all what happens in your school, or is it just us being incompetent? No? Okay. So, how do we make the right decision? Well, some of what uh, Mike said was uh, very pertinent to this. It's the time, take, make sure you take the time to reflect. But let's have a look. Okay. Okay, why am I doing this? Not why am I being a DOS, or why am I, you know... But why am I giving this concession or changing what the things that I thought of so clearly? I had this very clear plan in my head and it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I've got you know, kids running up the corridor and I've got uh, reception telling me that somebody wants to see them because they've, you know, whatever it is. Why am I making this concession, okay? And where could this lead to? Now, what I'm asking you to do is, I'm talking about moments of fear, moments of panic. So I thought the best thing to do was to try and impress on your brain this, that poor man in the bandages, okay? So the next time that you're harried about something, you think, you know, am I going to end up in whenever, whatever the time frame is, uh, with a problem that is just going to drive me mad. How much benefit is this to anybody else? Okay, so is this the best solution for all those involved? And when I say all those involved, don't forget your administration staff. Don't forget your front <coughs> office because whatever decision you make or your director makes or whoever it is who makes the decision makes, uh, they've got to sell it. Okay, and they have got to, we're talking about student retention, we're talking about uh, keeping students happy, we're talking about keeping clients happy, we're talking about keeping parents of, of, of clients happy, of, of students happy, and they, from my experience, people like to know where they're going and what they're doing, and why they can't swap from one group to the other, because, well, you know, they use a different book. Why can't such and such do this? Why can't I, as a teacher, uh, change the, com the time of my company classes because actually it would suit me better if they were, I mean, uh, this must have happened to everybody here, it would suit me better if they were 9.30 instead of 8.30. And the students have agreed. The students have all said yes, they've all said yes, okay? But the ma their manager hasn't and their training manager hasn't and we don't get the contract back because, you know, we said, oh yeah, okay, if they all agree, fine go away. <laughs> Say no. Okay. And so what I'm saying really is because we're not, we don't make decisions in, in isolation. What I'm saying is we have put a lot of thought into, I'm sort of saying the sort of royal we here, um, into what uh, decisions we've made to put the structures in place. I love systems. You know, I'm a bit system bound in fact but um, 
there's a reason for what we do, and all of us are thoughtful people, all of us are intelligent people and experienced people, and we have experienced people around us, and we've made a decision, okay? So, uh, in terms of the director, this can even be down to pricing and other things. Say no. People will come back if you say no. They really will. If you say to a teacher, instead of saying, and believe me, I've got experience of this, I mean, if you say to a teacher, uh, they ask you something, and obviously, most of the time, you want to say yes, uh, and you say yes as much as you possibly can, and you try and be open, as flexible as you possibly can, but within your principled limits. And quite often, if you just say, well, actually, no, and tell them why, that's the end of it. If you say, I'll think about it, or perhaps, or worst of all, we tried that five years ago and it didn't work, and you can see the hair standing up on the back of their necks, um, just say no. Okay. And finally, it was very nice. One of the things about the quiz last night, which was fabulous, was uh, the old songs at the beginning. Because um, some of us, not very many actually, but some of us in the room are a little bit older than everybody else. And um, so finally we were useful. Now, <laughs> uh, I don't know if any of you remember a, 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 a film called Love Story. Yes? It sent my father weeping into the streets of London when he was on a business trip years ago. Um, Okay, there was a wonderful quote in that, and so I've adapted it. So you, I haven't given you any wonderful references for, for um, management books or anything. I'm, this is my level. Okay, so here. So the original quote was, love means never having to say you're sorry. So basically we go back to our man in the bandages, okay? And if we replace that, it's a bit clunky, but you know. Uh, thoughtful decision making and what I'd like to say is principle, principled and assertive decision making should mean never having to say you're sorry. I'm not saying that you don't have to sometimes say sorry, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you should think ahead to at what stage you might have to say sorry and if it's fairly soon to anybody then perhaps it's the wrong decision. Okay? So, just say no. Okay? Uh, we about there. Yeah. Anyone got uh, anyone got any comments or questions or you can say no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.